Good morning! I'm excited today to share with you how we were able to allow users to change clothing inside of our worlds for free. They can try the clothes on, they can optionally buy them. It's pretty cool. So, without further ado, let's jump on in. Um, you're going to be disturbed to find out that they've already announced a new competition when you open up the update today. Uh, and here we are in Slumber Party build mode. And what we're going to do, I guess, is just do a quick demo. World Simulation on, jump into preview mode. I'm wearing one of the outfits right now, but we can find these outfits in this custom UI. Let's go and uh, click wear, and boom, outfit attached. Pretty sweet. And we've got some more. Just quickly really pause the music. And it's around the corner, here's our ice cream shop. And here at the ice cream shop, we can attach the outfit and we can remove the outfit. Pretty neat. It's pretty great. So I want to show you how it's done. Um, it is a little bit tricky. Now, if you've never worked with local scripts, I highly encourage you to check out the throwing with swipe gestures video because this mechanic is built on top of that mechanic uh, in the sense that we needed the local per player script so that we could uh, change the clothing. I'll show you what that looks like. So opening up our scripts, uh, there's a lot in this world. I'm, actually just, I'm not even sure which one to open. Uh, I guess we'll start with the local script and then we'll work through some of these. Let's go utility, local per player, three dots, open. Or, oh right, that should be fine for today. And so you're gonna recognize this script from that video. It is basically the same. Might just zoom it out a little bit so we can see more of it. And let's see, what else we got to show again here. So um, this is the script that runs on each player's device, whether that's mobile or VR or desktop. And on that device, we need to receive events. They're networked events. And so on the swipe one, you would remember we got the inter-focused interaction mode. And there should be... I guess that's it. Is that all? Oh, here it is. On swipe. This is, I was like... That doesn't seem right. And uh, on swipe allows us to do the swiping mechanic that you saw in the previous video. <clears throat> but we use this for any time we need something that's locally scripted. We have this default script that we can use. And I've just skimmed through it. So theoretically, you can pause the video if you want to copy and look through this. But um, going back, let's open that folder. Hopefully, this will just start working. All right, perfect. And what we want to look at next, oh, it's opened everything I was last working on. Nice. Let's close out all this. We have a local assigner, right? So we need to assign each of those gizmos as players into the world. And we do that by getting the index of the player. You'll learn all about that in that video I just mentioned. And so now that we've got this local assigner that assigns a per player, we've got events that we're connecting to in here. And so you can see we have apply avatar clothing, add avatar clothing, remove avatar clothing, remove avatar clothing item. And these all connect to these local methods that are pretty straightforward. Um, let's start with the removing. And removing clothing is as simple as clearing the avatar overrides. So you just go this dot owner, which is a player, and then dot clear avatar overrides, which clears all of these avatar items they're wearing. Now we wanted to make it so people could make custom outfits. So we have a local, um, a local string array of SKUs. That's the ID for each item. And we set it to empty here when we're clearing it out. Here in remove avatar clothing item, you can see we're using our array utilities, remove item from array to remove the current item from that array. And then we set the avatar overrides to that same array. So it just removes a singular item. And then when we avatar, add a clothing item, we just unshift one in. And the reason we have to unshift rather than push is because items at the beginning of the array take precedent over items at the end of the array. So by putting it at the beginning using unshift, if there is uh, two shirts being worn, it's going to prioritize the most recently worn one. And if they remove that, their other shirt will come back, um, which is pretty neat. And you can read all about how sad avatar overrides works from right here. The biggest thing you need to note is it does not work with hats. It only works with shirts, pants, or shirts, shirts, bottoms, top spot, tops, bottoms, dresses, one pieces, shoes, but does not work with hats. I'm not entirely sure why they're not doing hats, maybe because the hats kind of covered the face too much, but uh, it's really important to note that when we did pass hats in, 
it just did not work. There's no documentation here. It's only in the example on the website somewhere. Um, so anyway, now you know. It should say right here, but it doesn't for whatever reason. Now, um, applying avatar clothing, you could send a event with all of the items that you want them to wear. So we have an outfit. So this allows us to apply an entire outfit. And in that case, we do actually replace the entire previous outfit because we're applying a full outfit. So we replace the current clothes with the current item SKUs and then set avatar overrides again. Okay, so that's how it works on the local script and it's just connecting networked events. If you've never connected a networked event, we are connecting them from player so that you can send the event to the player that you want to change the clothing for. Uh, then we're connecting it just like you'd connect a code block event except our events are stored. Come on, scroll up. In an events data file. And I prefer to do this way. This is my preference. So we have events data. We have a local folder. I like to call them folder or bags of stuff. We've also got a networked folder. And in here in networked, we can see all of our avatar clothing networked events. So this is how they're created. And it describes what the pack, like what the payload is. So it's a JSON object uh, with some information <clears throat> or an empty JSON object. And then to use this, we're going to find the script. Let's see. This one is outfits, so it's by Ohm. Ohm avatar clothing trigger, here we go. So here we are on the trigger, and notably, it looks like there's some delays to prevent people from double tapping it, but what really matters inside this player enter trigger is um, <clears throat> the sending of the event, which is actually not used anymore. We used to send the event from here, but we decided there was some more stuff we wanted to do. So we're actually calling a separate function called, uh, where is it? Avatar clothing function dot apply avatar clothing. <clears throat> and so our trigger is calling this function file. And the reason we did that is so that we could use this function file in more than one place. And here we can see that apply avatar clothing is getting the player's data, which is from our player data player stats video and setting. Uh, and it looks like we've got a map where we're setting the player with whatever item SKUs they're currently wearing. Um, and then we're updating some stats, which is for the custom UI. So there's a binding. Um, then we're sending the networked event. And here's, this is the most important part. This is really all you care about is you need to send the networked event to your, to your player that needs to be worn this. Then you apply the avatar item and then you pass in the item SKUs. And there's different, like I said, there's four different events that we're using. So we have adding a singular item, we have removing an avatar item, and they're all pretty straightforward. For us though, because we're using a custom UI, there's a lot more complicated things that need to be done, like the binding. Sorry, my throat's kind of, <clears throat> it's like I'm coughing all the time, but I keep pausing so you don't hear me cough. Um, so anyway, the, um, that's basically it. So you're setting an argument. So that's really what you need to know. Now, as far as the custom UI is concerned, we actually ripped this out of one of our previous videos as well, which, um, let's see if I can find it. It was a 14 hour one. Um, you'd think I'd be able to find that really quickly. I should know what it's called. I think it's called IWP. No, um, adding money, monetary, let's see. Um, purchase, <clears throat> here it is, add in-world purchases. So this asset, the first, I think, 30 or 60 minutes of this video shows you how to use this asset. So if you go and download the scripts for this, we, I took those and I reworked one of the custom UIs into what you see today, which is the clothing custom UI. And um, <clears throat> mind you, it took like four hours of rework. It was like a lot of work. Um, and I'm still not happy with it. So if I ever get to a point where I'm really happy with it, but the problem is Noesis just came out. And so like, I don't even know that I'd recommend that. Like literally today, Noesis came out. So it might be worth like playing with Noesis because then it's gonna be super easy to make really great looking custom UI. Uh, it's a tough one for sure. So anyway, we're using custom UI because that's what existed for the competition, but now things have changed. Um, and there was a couple other important notes here. So we've got a data file and under systems commerce, you can add an avatar item. And so here you can see all of our avatar items, their prices. And when you add them to the world, they get stored in this avatar items dropdown. And from here you can copy the SKU, which is what you need. And so we have a giant 
um, data file, and I don't really want to show it because it's got all of our IDs in there, and I'm just not sure if that's safe to share. Um, but basically, it's a JSON object with the item name, the item SKU, and the um, and the texture, right? So every picture, we download the pictures from their website and use those for our custom UI. And so it's just a it's just an array of JSON objects or bags of stuff, whatever you want to call them. But it's just an array of those. And then we can get information about each of those items to use wherever we need to get the SKU. Um, and then the other thing is you probably want to sell it. So you're going to want to bring out the IWP gizmo. And so we have them below the world just to list them in the world. So we just duplicate one of these and then add the new world item. Um, but if you put these up in the world, people can click on them and actually buy the item. But we just want them to use the in-world purchase menu because uh, we're really not trying to push clothing here. I think that it might be fun to build a world where we have all of our clothing items listed, listed, but because this world is so heavily focused on just role-playing with the clothing, that wasn't really something that we wanted to necessarily like heavily push, and there's so many items here too. So yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, if we zoom in on the uh, triggers here, the other thing you might need to know for your look, your um, for your cross screens to players is we set it to selectable in screens mode so it's easy for people to select. It is actually harder for VR users. VR users have a hard time tapping on this whereas on um, cross screens it pops up with a little dialog box for them to know how to use it. So we're kind of hoping that players in VR just pick up because there's so many of these in the world that they just start learning how to just tap the text. But had we had a lot more time in this competition it wasn't so, you know, <laughs> there's only weeks. Um, we probably would have put some sort of indicator icon here that you could only see if you hadn't used it before or if it wasn't being used, maybe like a come wear me indication icon. And then once you're wearing it, it has a remove icon. Um, that would make a lot of sense. Let's see. Honestly, you could even just change the text, but then you still want to like figure out how to explain to them that they need to tap on it. We have another one over here that we actually need to fix. We've been kind of taking the weekend off, so I don't think that we've come in and fixed it. Although, that actually looks like it's been fixed. <clears throat> um, world simulation on. Let's see if it works. The uh, problem was it was inside the... Oh, it's, yeah, it's still... Wow, that's crazy. I think that's what's happening. Let's check. We click on this. Trigger. Excuse me, trigger. Are you there? There's the trigger. Um, I think the trigger is inside the collider. Like maybe the collider needed to be adjusted. Selectable in screens mode is selected. There, ah, yeah. So our collider is way too big. Um, just a, just an easy mistake on our part. Let's uh, so be careful not to put the trigger inside of things, and that should start working now. Let's go. Interesting though, is your as a VR player, you can actually put your hand inside of walls, so it worked just fine for VR. Now it's working. Nice. And um, yeah, we've got those everywhere for people to come and discover and find. It's so much fun. Um, it does take a minute for the outfit to apply. So you're seeing we're using a pop-up that lasts five seconds to let them know that it's applying the outfit or removing the outfit. Um, and once you've applied it, it does go a little bit faster. So you see how much faster that changed. Um, but yeah. <clears throat> okay. I think that is just going to about do it for us. Um, I hope to be making some more of these breakdown videos. They are a little bit more intense. Um, so if you're struggling to understand how to apply this in your world, I would highly encourage you to watch that Throwing with Swipe Gestures tutorial video. That's going to show you how to make most of the foundation that you need. And then it's just adding those functions that I showed you on the local player, connecting the event, sending the event, and you're done. So anyway, um, let me know how it goes. We got a Discord link this in the description. Would love to hear from you guys if you're struggling. Let me know where you're getting stuck. Um, if there's a, something you have questions about, feel free to ask. Um, but because there is so much content in Slumber Party that I would like to make videos on, probably going to stick to breakdowns um, just because I can do a little bit faster. We're only at 14 minutes rather than what would have been two hours of coding. Uh, so <laughs> if we try to do it from scratch specifically, like using the local thing, like that stuff, I mean, it took an hour in the last one, so maybe it would have only been an hour, but still. All right, I'll catch you later. Bye!